Amen. Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, a few announcements before we get started. We have another song or no? Is that it? We're good. Well, I guess we're good. All right. We're good with the songs. All right. Uh, just a, a reminder. Listen, if you don't know, if you can call one person this week, and if you want a name uh, to call just to say, hey, would you come on Sunday and be here? These are people that usually attend or uh, might be home right now or whatever. And you'd like a couple of names or even just one name. Uh, say, hey, if you'll come, we'd love for you to be here. Uh, I've got probably six, seven, eight, nine, ten names, uh, folks. So uh, if you'll see me after, I'll give you those and we'll take care of that. Uh, Ashley, could you pass this? This is our uh, dinner for Sunday, right after church. We're going to keep evening service just like it is. We don't have a lot scheduled. We'll have dinner. You can go home, rest for a little bit, and come on back. So uh, 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 we're going to do a message Sunday on the rapture. Wouldn't it be great for the Lord to come back right in the middle of a message on the rapture? Amen. That'd be good. I'd like that. So uh, we ask you to do that. I think that's, uh, think that's all the announcements. Revival month, so be inviting people. Uh, get them to come. And by the way, I do share, I do those little two-minute blips on Facebook. If you could just share those, We're just trying to get more information out there, get more information out in our church and, and things, you know, just, if you can, listen to it. If you don't want to listen to it, hit share, that's okay. Um, that's fine. So we're getting uh, quite a few hits on those, so that's, that's a good thing. We put another one out there this afternoon. Um, my uh, producer has been helping me with different things to help me to do a better job. I'm not used to doing that, okay? And I could stand up here and preach all day long, but to stare at that little camera and whatnot just doesn't go too well. So, all right. So I got all my teenagers up front. And I'm preaching to you. This is training time. Not fun time now. We're doing training time. And we're going to start with a thing called integrity. All right? So if you want to come up, whoever's sitting up front gets a treat afterwards and... We'll do this until you get tired of me, and we'll be good. So, uh, yeah, Melody, you're a teenager now. It's about right. Huh? Not here. Well, she's a teenager now then. Gotcha. Father, we come before you now. Bless this time as we begin a new series here on um, building a, a, a purposeful life. And Lord, just help us and help these young people. Lord, our, 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 our young people today are are a mess, and I think they're a mess because their parents were a mess and their parents were a mess. And Lord, help us to get this, this ship righted back up, uh, Christianity in America. Uh, help us, Lord, to uh, build people with good, solid character. And we ask this in Christ's holy name. Amen. All right, so a uh, little bullet point up here on integrity. It says, no matter how educated, talented, rich, or cool you believe you are, how you treat people tells, tells you everything. Integrity is everything. Integrity is absolutely everything in your walk. It'll affect you at work. It'll affect you at school. It'll affect you in the neighborhood with neighbors and everybody else. So we're going to spend some time tonight. And the Bible speaks a lot about personal integrity. So we're going to look at this over the next two weeks. We're not going to rush. But uh, I guess I have a question here, and that is, uh, what is integrity? I need a microphone up here because these guys are going to use a microphone. So, uh, red. what color? Red. red. All right. So we're going to use a red one. So let me ask you a question tonight. What is integrity? When other people are doing wrong things and you stand up for what is right. Okay, standing for what is right, no matter the circumstances or situation. Good, very good. Okay, Josh. Integrity is everything. <laughs> Josh is going to be a politician, okay, and uh, that's good. It, it, it is everything. Anyone else? A thought about integrity. I'll, uh, I'll help you out with this. I'll give you a slide, kind of defines integrity up here. And uh, it's a quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. It's a moral uprightness. 
If you had to grade morality today, not just in America, in the world, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the Lord could start heaven right here because that's where we're at, okay? Or 1, it's Genesis 6, and here comes the flood again. Where would you put us? One, two, one, two. adults? One or two, three, I don't know. Yeah, our, our problem today is we've gone from a, and I feel sorry for these young people, because we've gone from an immoral society, from a moral society to an immoral society to an amoral society. Do you know, what's an amoral society? There's a the microphone, shout it out. What's an amoral society? Amoral, what does that mean? Amoral. Zachary knows. Not having any morals. It has the absence of morals. It is no morals. And we'll see that as we go through this. Listen, we need to have morals, don't we? Right? It's in the... Uh, uh, the, the clothes we wear, um, some people wear clothes are so revealing, it's, it's pathetic. It's in our language, it's in the stuff we watch. I mean, morals are all across. So if integrity is there, so if, if you have no morals or poor morals, do you have any integrity? No. 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 By the way, this is an 1828 uh, definition out of Webster's Dictionary. Um, we change the meaning of words all the time. But that's what integrity is, okay? Um, it's synonymous with being honest. So if I said you were a person with that was honest, that would be a token of what? Integrity. Integrity okay? You were upright. Right? Doing things that were right. Right? You would be integrity, right? Right? These are words that are synonymous with this. Somebody who's trustworthy. My wife read the other day, said, if you've got somebody you don't like them very much and you want them to go away, loan them a hundred dollars. <laughs> You'll never see him again, right? So I thought that was pretty good. But trustworthy, and listen, these are things. I, I, I heard, read something the other day. It really bothered me. It was about a, a, a young lady who said, uh, what she did is she said, having God without legalism. Now understand that the true definition of legalism is adding something to salvation. Okay. It's not having standards and rules in your life. That's not legalism, unless you have to do those things to get saved. So if someone says you have to be baptized to be saved, they are a legalist, right? But if someone says, look, you, you, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, but it has nothing to do with your salvation, is that a legalist? No. But anyway, this, this young lady was complaining because when she was growing up, uh, her, her parents wouldn't let her date until she was like uh, a senior or out of high school. Uh, wouldn't let her go to some parties where alcohol was being served. Uh, uh, and went right on, wouldn't let her watch, you know, bad stuff on television, all these things. So she called her parents legalistic, and she's glad now that she's out from underneath all that, and she can still have that relationship with God without having to keep all those rules. Integrity or not? No. no. See, my biggest concern with, with young people, because when you hit 18, when you hit 18, you're going to have to decide if this is for you or not. Because before that, you're kind of growing up with your parents' religion. Right? I mean, I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm, you, I, don't get me wrong there. But that's where your values, that's where things come in, that's where they're built. But at some point, you get out of high school, and now you've got to make a decision. You've got to make a decision whether I'm going to live the life that I've been taught, that the preachers preach, the Sunday school, maybe if you've got godly parents, the godly parents have taught me. Am I going to live that, or am I going to forsake it and go do something else? Here was this girl's biggest problem. She says, I feel like I don't fit into the culture. I want to tell you something. If you fit into this culture, I've got an altar right here. Okay? Because you're not going to fit into the culture. By the way, true Christians have never fit into the culture. They've never been a part of it because, remember, it's a spiritual warfare in Ephesians 6, right? 
All right? Devil versus God, that's what it is. So we understand. So we understand a little bit here. It's synonymous. It's a state of being whole and undivided. Okay? Speaking more of a, uh, a unity, a cohesiveness, it's there. Uh, just another definition uh, for that. So we, we look at these things, and uh, I want to ask you a question. Most of you have read your Bibles really well. I want you to give me one person in the Bible that you think was a person of integrity. The first one, Zachary. David. Who? David. David, okay. David was a man with integrity. Was he a perfect man? No. Did he lapse? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, integrity doesn't mean you're perfect, right? That would mean nobody had integrity. But actually, God does call him a man of integrity. All right? Uh, who else? Ashley. John. John. The Apostle or John the Baptist? Okay. I, I would say both. Okay? <laughs> but you're right. So that's good. Okay, anybody else? Come on, think of some people. You've read your Bibles. You know some people. Adults, anybody? Tim? Jesus, thank you. I was hoping somebody would say that, okay? Jesus was a person of integrity, right? Anybody else? Noah. Who? Noah. Noah, man that was just and righteous. The whole world around him was going the other way, wasn't it? He's building a ship, and it's never rained. He's far from sea, right? He's building this thing for a century, and all they do is laugh at him. Maybe they came by and drove in a few nails or, or put up some of that black pitch and stuff like that. But no one, no one responded yet. He would not turn back. Uh, Avery. Esther. Esther. Very good. Okay. Esther would not turn her back uh, on her faith, right? Very good. Uh, Natalie. Daniel. Daniel, yes. Another man of integrity. Very good. All right. Now, we got another one? Who had one? Oh, Melody. Oh, that's a Judas. Ruth? Ruth, yes. Ruth is very good. You have one back there somewhere? If you're back six rows, you're out of my range, okay? Yeah, I like these front rows. You, Job, okay, very good. We'll look at him a little bit tonight, by the way. That's good. All right. Now, that's, I'd ask you another question, but can you think of somebody, present company excluded, that you find has great integrity that you know? Present company excluded, okay? Ashley? Pastor. Pastors, but not this one. The present company excluded, okay? Tim. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> let's just kind of keep going here and we'll. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. You, you learned this real well tonight, okay, Tim? Tim? Tim. You listen real good, okay? <laughs> uh, let's take a psalm walk. Open your Bible, Psalm 78. Or 7, I should say. Psalm 7. We'll take a little psalm walk here. Adults, open them up. By the way, it's never too late for an adult to develop integrity. Let your yea be yea. And let your nay be nay. Stand for what you believe. The world wants you to stumble, to fall, to move in another direction. Psalm chapter 7, verse 8. Okay. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. 
often been said, what you, you know, integrity is what you are when you're all by yourself. It's what you are when you're not in church. It's what you are when you're at home by yourself. That's integrity. So here's the psalmist saying, look it, you're going to judge my integrity. You know, you can fool some of the people some of the time and or all the people some of the time and some of the people all the time and uh, but you're never going to fool God. All right? Integrity is something, I heard read another thing, is built in the dark. So nobody's around, nobody's looking. That's that desire. You know something? I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be trustworthy. You know, there are people that they just plain can't tell a lie. Right? Just doesn't happen. Okay? But and there are people who are trustworthy. There are people that you can rely on. These are, these are people with integrity. When they say one thing, they, they, they mean that one thing. And that's what they stay with. He says, look at, judge me, Lord. Judge my integrity. Let me ask you tonight, no hands. How many would like the Lord to judge your integrity tonight? If not, we got some things to work on, don't we? Young people, your integrity is being built. And I'm going to challenge you tonight in the next few weeks to be a person of integrity. Uh, Psalm 26 in verse 1, kind of the same same thought as we go back to 26 in verse 1. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. Okay, what's the difference between having integrity and walking in integrity? Is there a difference? Say yes. Yeah, there is, isn't there? You can have it and never use it. Right? You say, well, I have integrity. I just don't want to use it. It's like uh, some of us, we say, hey, I've got patience. I just don't like using it. Right? I love everybody except for them. Those kind of things. So we look at this tonight. He says, look, not only have you implanted that into me and that character has been built, but tonight, let me say something. I'm going to walk in my integrity. That means when you're at school and you're taking a test and you don't quite know the answers, but the person next to you has their paper hanging half off their desk and it'd be easy to look over and look at it, you don't look. Got it? Say yes. Yes. Yeah. It works. Same thing. You know, we're not going to cheat our way through. We're going to get this right. So I walk in mine integrity. You're in that chapter. Go down to verse 11. 26, 11. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. Have mercy. Don't, don't give me, Lord, what I deserve. When I trip and fall as David did. By the way, when we trip and fall and we sin, what should we do? Matt, what should we do? When we sin, what should we do? First John 1 John 1.9, right? We confess our sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then we keep going, right? That's what we do. So we, we see this. We see it. It judges us. It walks by us. Uh, turn back to 25.21. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me. Okay, why do we embalm a dead body? Yes. To preserve it, okay? Why do we put food in the refrigerator? To preserve it, that's right. So, look at, he says, preserve me, keep me, keep me strong, keep me, keep me good, he's saying. So, integrity, when we have it, look at, it can preserve us as well. Now, you're in Psalms, just go over one book to Proverbs. Go over to Proverbs. Look at chapter 11, Proverbs 11 and verse 3. Integrity is doing the right thing when no one is watching. 11.3. Okay. The integrity of the upright shall do what? Guide them. So the Holy Spirit is our guide, of course. He's our moral compass. But he says here, your integrity will guide you in things that you should do. When you're walking in integrity, when you're honest, when you're upright, when you're trustworthy, when you're living by God's divine law, 
and you're, you're doing those things, look at that will guide you. I'm not wanting, you know, there's a saying out there, let your conscience be your guide. And that might be all right if your conscience is clear and you're right with the Lord, but not if you're unsaved, right? Their conscience is defiled. By the way, we, we are in a land today, I mean, uh, we, another mass shooting this weekend, and uh, things going crazy. Look at, he says here, thy, thine integrity will guide me. Look at Proverbs 19 and verse 1. Proverbs 19, verse 1. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. We could take a trip to Washington, D.C., couldn't we? Better is poor. You're better off with absolutely nothing and having integrity than be rich and speak like a fool and foul. I tell you what, I've been around folks that, I mean, they had money, lots of money, lots and lots and lots of money, but their language was awful. They had no integrity. They're, they're not people of the word. And, you know, it used to be, and some of us are old enough to remember, when a handshake was all you needed, right? You were doing something, you were selling something, you shook each other's hand and and uh, if they left, it wasn't, ha, ah, got you on that thing. It was, hey, if it didn't work, bring it back and we'll take a look at it. That's gone. Now we have to sign legal papers and get documents signed and, and everything else. See, this is God's point of view on you. You can have a lot of money, you can have a lot of stuff, but if you don't have integrity, according to God, you don't have anything. We need integrity. And then down in... Oh, another chapter, chapter 20 and verse 7. The just man walketh in his integrity. Now watch, and his children are what? Blessed after him. Funny thing in life. It's that old thing, your, your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Right? Anybody want to repeat that for me? There you go. Good. You're getting that. Understand something. Listen, especially moms and dads, grandparents. What you do speaks volumes over what you say. And we take some of us that are, are older now, maybe some of our parents are gone and whatnot. We look back. Can't remember much about what mom or dad said, but we remember a lot about what they did. Am I right? Help me out here, folks. Am I right? Yes. That means your walk needs to be upright. Your walk needs to be one of integrity. When they watch you and see how you handle a phone call, see how you handle somebody at the door, somebody at the store, somebody that needs some help. Coming out of a building, uh, I can't remember where we were yesterday, and uh, we were trying to come out. And one lady was coming in with a wheelchair, and so we got, I got both doors for her, and then somebody else was coming in. And, you know, but those are things that people used to do. People don't do a lot more anymore, do they? Hold the door open for somebody. Just help somebody. Be, be kind to somebody. Those are things we're supposed to be doing. That's what an upright person does. A person with integrity, that's what we're supposed to be doing. It's a family heritage. You know, there's families. Uh, you can look at families. They have a family heritage of people not having integrity. They kind of lie, cheat, and steal their way through life, and uh, that's, that's no heritage to live. So I'm going to challenge our young people. Look, at there's some back there that aren't up here. They're not out of high school, but I'm going to tell you, I challenge you right now. You do everything you can do to start developing integrity, and if you've got some integrity, you build it more, and then you keep it. You know, a good name takes a lifetime to build and about 20 seconds to destroy. All right? You keep that good name. And by the way, your name also speaks to your family. I made a phone call today. I've got a class reunion coming up, trying to find a couple of people in my class that, that died in Vietnam. I got on the phone with somebody, and uh, they were at the VFW and Wayne, and they, oh, Mac. Oh, well, I know the Macs. Your, your sister's all the judge here, right? And uh, uh, my, uh, the, the guy here, he went to, uh, he was going on and on about, you know, your name is there. People know your name. Now, how do they know your name? They know it is good? Well, you they would, right? 
Anyway, do they know it that it's, that it's, that it's good? Or they, do they, is, there, is there kind of a, a, a little bad connotation to it? You see, young people, listen. You are building your character. You're building your integrity. You're building your heritage. Do it right and stay with it. Well, my biggest fear is my, my wife and I talked about it. We came to come to church tonight. My biggest fear with my grandchildren is that the devil will bring the wrong person into their life as a lifetime mate. And I've seen it happen to some folks that I thought were rock solid. So before you think, this is okay. You come and bring that person to grandpa. I guarantee he won't be around anymore, okay? You be careful who you give your heart to, seriously. The heart is a very funny thing, boy, and I'll tell you what, you can fall for the wrong person, and before you know it, you're somewhere where you don't want to be. Don't let it happen to you. Got me? Young people? A little, uh, I don't know what they call this. They call this some kind of thing up here, but uh, it spells integrity. Can you see that? Okay, I-N-T-E-G-R... I-T-Y, that's right, very good. And so it has eight points up here. And I'm going to take a few minutes to go through each one of these and give you some scriptural illustration. You know, if you can remember this, integrity. Write that down on a piece of paper. Write it down in a flyleaf of your Bible. You, you know you can write in your Bible, right? Everybody know that? Okay, you can write in there. It's okay. Uh, I heard somebody say, you can't write. That, that's God's word. Well, yeah, but don't take away from his words, but there's blank pages in there you can write on. The, the, the pages and the words that are in ink, they're not holy, folks. Right? It's God's word that's holy. Right? And we have it here in ink. So uh, just understand that. So we're going to look at some things. The first one is righteousness. And I'll give you a little bit of a definition as we go through this. You can, you can kind of jot that down, but uh, it's being just. But it's being just according to God's divine law. Here's where the problem comes in in our culture. And that is that the right laws are the laws that are made by man. Understand that? So if you don't keep man's laws or do what man says and you'd rather do what God says, they might not see you as just. But Paul said this as he was speaking to others. He says, I, I have a clear conscience before all men because he kept the divine law. The measurement of righteousness is by doing what God tells you to do. It shows one who is holy of heart, set apart for the Lord. That's what we need. And it observes the, the God-given commands of the Bible and they, they practice right living. Young people, adults, we need to know the book. Amen. And then we need to practice it. We need to live it. You know, I had an invitation to go play golf on Monday. I played golf in probably two or three years. I have no idea how the shoulder is and whatnot. But a preacher friend of mine, uh, uh, he wants me to go. And, and he's a physical mess himself. We may go sit in a golf cart and ride around the course for a couple of hours. But... Uh, uh, one reason I'm going to go is it put on by a funeral home, and they want us to bring two pairs of our shoes, and they will polish those for us. So, you got a pair of shoes that need to be polished, let me know. <laughs> we'll take them. But anyway, you know, wherever I was going with that, I was going somewhere, but it's, it's right living. Anyway, it applies to, to man's actions, our right testimonies, doing the right thing, doing what we're supposed to be doing. That is called righteousness. Look at uh, a couple texts in Genesis. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 1. Genesis 7 and verse 1. Someone brought up Noah earlier. Genesis 7 verse 1 says, And the Lord said unto Noah, 
Now go back to verse 22 of the last chapter. It's right there. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Was Noah obedient? Did Noah do what God told him to do? Was it easy? No. no. It was very hard, very difficult. Everybody was going against him, even except his family. But now it's time, and, and he says this, And the Lord said unto Noah, in verse, chapter 7, verse 1, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. He sees righteous Noah. He sees just Noah. And he pulls Noah onto the ark. And so go over to, to chapter 18, look at verse 23. We see Noah in a very, in fact, God would destroy the world because of sin. I always like this in Genesis 18. And I will get to it probably after you do. Genesis chapter 18. And uh, look, at, uh, look at verse 23. Story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And when, when Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Pre-adventure, there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? Verse 25. That be far from thee to do after this manner, to sway the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that they be far from thee. Shall not the judges judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous... Within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Did he find 50 righteous? No. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am, which am but dust and ashes. Preadventure there shall lack five of the 50. How many is that? 45. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there 40 and five, I will not destroy it. Did he find 45? No. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Preadventure, there should be 40 found there. And he said, I will not do it for 40's sake. Were there 40? No. no. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Preadventure, there shall be 30. You notice he skipped 35, okay? Uh, we're going down to 30 now. Did he find 30? No. no, he didn't find 30. He found there, and he said, I will do it. It, it, not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, Behold, now I have taken unto me to speak unto the Lord. Preadventure, most he skips 25. Preadventure, speak unto me, there, there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20's sake. 20? No. no. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet, but this once. Preadventure, 10. Shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Were there ten there? No. no. And the Lord went his way. He was done. <laughs> as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. We see a tremendous difference in what would be called righteousness. And, you know, we look at a world today, and, you know, we call certain things Righteous, they were a, a, a good person. You know, evil people can do something good. Am I right? I mean, sinful, evil people, they'll, they'll collect money. In fact, sometimes they do better good than we do. They'll collect money or whatnot and send it to the Bahamas and take care of those folks and things like that. But righteousness isn't one act. Righteousness isn't just one thing that you do that's good. Righteousness is a life of keeping God's laws and God's commandments, God's precepts, God's statutes. Thy word have I hidden my heart that I may not sin against thee. It's being a born again child of God. That's where righteousness comes in. Can righteous people do evil things? Yeah. Sure they can, right? That's called sin, right? Of course they can. But what predominates in a righteous man's life or righteous woman's life is good. Doing well, keeping the law of the Lord dominates and predominates in a, an evil person's life is just the opposite. So we see the eye for integrity is righteous. The end is honorable. 
What do you think of when you think of somebody who is honorable? Tim? Somebody who honors God. Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right. What else? Anybody? Adults? No? Right, we, we go to the court and sometimes we call the judge your honor. It's a position that's, that's, that's exalted and lifted up. We might see a king or a queen or a, uh, a president, something like that, and they'll, we'll, we'll honor them, all right, uh, because they are above us, all right, and things. So the idea here, though, isn't in, in the position of your social standing. The honor here is, who, of course, who you give honor to in your life, which is to God, and how you live your life. It's, it's a it's way people look at you. It's principles that, 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 that strive and, and, and take your life. Um, look at Acts chapter 17 and verse 12. We'll go over the New Testament a little bit. We're not going to rush through this. When we're done, time is up. We'll be time up and we'll get through it. I want you to get this. Chapter 17 of Acts. And uh, in fact, we'll go back up to verse 10 and catch up on this, this story. Acts chapter 17, starting in verse 10. It says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night on to Berea. Remember, they were, they were in this other city and things were not going well and they wanted to put him to death. So they sent him away by night, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. You know, there's something about our life, living it kind of above the garbage of the world. All right? Listen, young people, there's places you just don't go. There's places you don't go into. You don't belong in a bar. You don't belong in a nightclub, some dance place. You don't belong in those places. You don't belong where people are a party, where people are doing alcohol or drugs or things like that or immoral behavior. You do not belong there. Do we understand that? You've got a higher calling. Remember, honorable being higher God sees you as higher. He says, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. We honor our lives. By the way, is it your body? No. Whose is it? God. It's God's, isn't it? For you are bought with the price. You're not your own. Therefore, glorify God in your body. So we, we honor him by how we use what he's given to us. So we use our body right. We don't let the wrong things come into our eyes. We, we make sure and, and, and make sure the wrong things aren't on, on our internet or on our phone or different places or places we go or when people are telling bad jokes or talking about somebody at school or they're gossiping it's about somebody at church. We turn our back, we walk away because we're not going to hear that stuff. Right. Yeah. We don't need that stuff. It's an honorable life. Listen, you are a child of of the king. Amen. Think about that. You know, uh, we had our former president, Barack Obama, his daughter now is going to University of Michigan. And they let her move in the, the day before everybody else did. And, and uh, you know, they're treating her like a, a queen over there and everything. They're, they're honoring her because of who she is? No. It's because her father was president. And when that naturally comes with that, there's an honor that goes to those after. Like them or not, doesn't matter, okay? It's the position and what goes with that. Your parents may not be kings and queens and presidents and princesses, but your heavenly father, the king of kings and the lord of lords. Amen. You have an honorable position and you need to maintain that. Sometimes they have to pull aside some of the royalty in England. If you ever watch the news and watch some of that, they got to pull on the sides. Hey, you really shouldn't be doing that. Am I right? You really shouldn't be going there. Some of that Because that's not honorable. 
We live a life. The second one is a life that is honorable. Uh, you're in uh, the Old New Testament. Go over to 1 Corinthians, just over a book, two books. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 4 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 10. Start in verse 9. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men, and then they were. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable. But we're despised by the world. You're, you're honorable. He says, listen, they're, they're, there's, they, they didn't like the apostles because of what the apostles preached and taught. They, they preached against sin. Hard to find churches today who preach against sin. All afraid about losing people and whatnot. And they leave, they get mad and all those kind of things. We need to preach the whole word of God. If you're there, turn over to chapter 12, verse 23. Same book. 12, 23. Chapter 12, verse 23, speaks here about this. This whole chapter deals with the church. It deals with members in the church. It deals with spiritual gifts that are given to people in the church. If you're saved here today, you have a spiritual gift. Right? You find out what that is, learn what that is, develop that gift that's in you, as Paul told Timothy in one of his letters. He says, look at, in verse 23, and those members of the body... Let me ask you, is one member better than another member? No. no. They're all equal in God's sight. The arm, the leg, the liver, the kidney, they all, they're all needed, right? Your toes, your nose, and everything that grows. I mean, it's all, it's all part of your human body. I always laugh when they say, well, we took that out. You really didn't need that. Yes, you did, right? You did, but they determined you didn't, so it's, it's gone. But he says here, look at And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable. I'm going to stop and park here for a minute. Maybe even finish here. This is for everybody. How do you treat people who come to church? Do you just look for your buddies? You're real quick. You're a couple of folks that you know. Or do you start looking for others? You know, God sends us all kinds of people. All kinds of people. But when they come here, you know, and they, they become members, you know something? They're just as equal as every other person is. In God's sight, they're just as good as you are. All right? We need to take the time, we need to drop the pride, and go find some folks and talk to them. And I heard something the other day, really, it broke my heart. I was told by somebody that said, you know, it's not a very friendly church. We used to be a very friendly church. What happened? And we become so in our little group and nobody else can get into our group. You know, we're in Sunday schools, us over here and them over there. You know, what are we doing? What are we doing? He says here in this verse, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Always, you know, remember Peter, when Peter was here? Peter was always the, what was he? He was the liver. He was the liver in the body, right? If there was garbage to take out, that's what the liver does, by the way. So if you're one of those people that like eating liver, remember what it has in it. Anyway, liver. Nobody wants to be the liver. So I say, hey, you get, you get to be any body parts you want. Can you imagine raising your hand and say, I want to be the liver? Right? The stuff that gets all the garbage and filters all the waste out of the body? Nobody does. But you want to know something? You can't live without a liver. Right? We still miss Peter. I miss him. I miss him dearly. You know, he did things here that most people don't know. But I tell you what, he was, he was solid. Love the man. And uh, 
I'm going to tell you something. You need to be honorable. I've got just a couple minutes. We're going to try and do one more here. So we, we are people that are righteous, and we are people that are honorable, right? That's how we're going to live our lives, right? right. All right. Let's go to truthful. Yikes. Maybe I should skip that one. Right? Let's look at a few verses. Truth for a person who speaks the truth, no matter what the circumstances might be. By the way, just a point there. Always speak the truth, but you don't always have to say all the truth. We got that? You know, sometimes you can just go too far. Somebody says, well, how do you like my shoes? Man, those shoes are really great, but I can't believe the rest of the clothes you have on. Right? All they ask for what you thought about my shoes. You're good, right? Don't get yourself into trouble with the rest of it. We're going to look at some scriptures here, but it's, this is one of the hardest things to do is to keep truth all the time. Look at your Bibles. Two more sections of scripture will be done. Exodus chapter 18. Going back to the Old Testament into Exodus and Joshua. Exodus chapter 18 and verse 17. Exodus 18, 17. The year I was born, 1817 uh, through 23, and Moses' father-in-law said unto him, now remember, there's, a, there's over 2 million Jews, and Moses is trying to do it all. And I've heard all different kinds of arguments that his father-in-law stuck his nose. We shouldn't stick his nose. But I really believe if you read this, I think his father-in-law loved Moses and saw Moses just burning himself out. He says this, and Moses' father-in-law said unto him, the thing that thou doest is not good. That was not he was doing evil, the fact that he was burning himself out. That thou, thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee, for this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. So he gives him, I always love this because he gives him a way to do something. You know, if you got a, if you got a criticism, give a way to, to do it better, right? Hearken now unto my voice, I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and, and, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. Now watch. Such as fear God, men of what? Men of truth. Hating covetous and, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. By the way, that's the way they would divide military up as well. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou wilt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. So if he had a really difficult issue, they would maybe hear that and then take that one to Moses. But what, and we do that in our court system a little bit today. Sometimes you see a magistrate instead of seeing the judge himself, and the judge sees the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the higher uh, issues that are there. Now, why would he want men that are truthful? What's the big deal? Would you want a dishonest judge? Would you want somebody who's taking money under the table to, to, to give a certain decision a certain way? Somebody comes in and they say, hey, that man ran over my pig. I guess it would be a pig in Israel. He ran over my cow with his chariot. It goes before the judge. And this guy slips the, the, the judge a few bucks underneath here and says, hey, uh, you, you, you make sure you tell that guy it was his fault for putting his cow in my cart's way. And that judge says, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, well, I hear in favor of, of the defendant because I believe it was your fault that you got, your cow got in the way of the cart. Would that be a good judge? No. no. One of the greatest things you'll know, be known for in your life is if you're truthful are not truthful. I had a man once work for me. I think he, 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 he lied so much he didn't even know the truth himself. Okay? 
The greatest things you can do is be a truthful person. Tell the truth. You face the piper. If you got in trouble, you got in trouble, right? Be a truthful person. That builds integrity. Part of integrity is a word called what? Trust. Trustworthy. If you're trustworthy, then you're worthy of trust, right? People can trust you. Maybe uh, they go on vacation or somebody goes on vacation. They can trust you to come in and, and watch their house and not sell everything that's there while they're gone, right? They can trust you with a secret. By the way, if somebody comes up to you and says you want to hear a secret, you know one person never to tell a secret to, right? That's right. That person, because they're going to tell yours as well. Are you trustworthy? One more text, we'll be done. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua now comes to the end of his life, and he's given a final command before he passes away to the people of Israel. His, his final words, his, his final preaching message, we'll say. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 14, he says these words. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. By the way, a quick point. That's more than just an awesome reference, or reverence, I should say. You do understand that God controls the wind. God controls everything. Could God have stopped that hurricane? Absolutely. In fact, the hurricane came about because God allowed it. God tries to send messages to us to wake up. Verse 14 and 15, Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in, whosoever, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will do what? Serve we'll serve the Lord. We're going to do it in righteousness. We're going to do it in honor. We're going to do it in trustworthiness and truthfulness. We're going to be those that, that are truthful and, 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 and honest and honorable and righteous. That's how we're going to live our lives. And I challenge you tonight, start here. We've got to INT, right? That what it was? T, right? Yeah. INT. Work on those this week. Adults, work on those this week. Your children will learn integrity from you. Have you ever watched a, a kid and they're just like their parents? <laughs> sometimes good, sometimes bad. My, my daughter said there was some study about it's really good for kids to be brought up by their grandparents. And I looked at her and said, well, we'll see. Because <laughs> sometimes I do things that are... Yeah, sometimes. I, I have fun, okay? And sometimes I have too much fun. But anyway, it's nothing to do with integrity, just maturity, I guess. Anyway, listen to me. Integrity. By the time we get done with this series, it might take us two weeks, three weeks, just on this part. You're going to understand what integrity is. And if you don't have it, you're going to desire it in your life. And you're going to say, no, something, I'm going to take a stand, and I'm going to live for this. Because the world's going one way, folks. Christianity's going another way. You're at a crossroads. You've got to decide which way you're going to go. And I'll tell you this much. I've been doing this for a long time. Watching people who are saved go the wrong direction is an awful thing to see. Because they don't fit anywhere. Watching people go in the right direction, even counterculture to it, and we are counterculture. Listen, that's where the joy and the blessings come. Let's live for the Lord. Let's stand. We'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you tonight for this time we've gathered together. And Lord, we, our heart does go out to those who've suffered great loss during this hurricane. We, we know some of our uh, brothers and sisters. There's been church, a couple of churches that have sent out emails asking us to pray for them. And Lord, we pray that uh, through all of this that there would be souls that would come to trust in you. That uh, Lord, they'd realize that you are the one true God. And Lord, we pray for those as the storm continues, that you'd give them uh, safe, safety, you'd give them wisdom to get out of the way of this storm. Lord, tonight, as we brought this message on integrity, we see how important it is to you. Therefore, it should be important to us to build integrity into our lives. 
be with these young people tonight. Lord, the devil's coming at them hard. We have some, they're, they're a little bit older now, and uh, maybe not in our younger group, but Lord, the devil's still coming. Do anything he can as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour, trying to ruin their testimony, trying to get them to go with the culture and still, instead of counterculture. Lord, keep them strong. Build integrity into their lives and their hearts and their character. And Lord, as they stand strong, when the winds of change come, may people see their strength in you. And may ask, they ask them for the reason of the hope that lieth within them, with meekness and fear. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed.